Ten years. Ten years. Ten years. For ten years, we have been producing real-time or chronology-based documentary series as opposed to event or place-based, which is the traditional way of doing documentaries. And it all began with this whiteboard in Cologne in March 2014. Hey guys, this is Sebastian uh, here to interview uh, my bosses for the 10 year anniversary. And uh, so let's get right to it with the question of how did it start in Cologne? How did you get there? Well, uh, at the time uh, I was working as CEO at MediaCraft, a company that Astrid and I co-founded, uh, an MCN, a multi-channel network. And YouTube had contacted me and asked me to help them get British Pathé, a historical library of newsreels, onto the platform. So I met with Roger Felber, who was the CEO at the time of, of British Pathé, and we talked about history and we found out we had a lot of things in common about our passion for history and documentaries. And he says in the middle of that, um, oh yeah, it's the centennial of the outbreak of World War I. And I happen to have 3,000 clips uh, from the First World War, which to me was quite astonishing considering that moving images began in 1896. And Pathé began in 1897. That's correct. Oh. Uh, and uh, I was like, what? And he was like, can we do something about that? And by the end of the conversation, we had gotten access on a revenue share basis to all of British Pathé's library. And the first thing I did was to call these two guys and I said, you won't believe what just happened. We have to meet. And yeah. Indy flew to Cologne. Astrid was already in Cologne because you were, what were you doing in Cologne at the time? You were. Um, he mentioned the MCN. Uh, I was program director of that very thing. And, and you had like over 100 channels or something, right? You had a lot of 500. channels. 500 channels. A lot. My bad. 500. <laughs> and we had 3,600 partners on top of that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was what happened. Um, Sparty was so excited. So he got Indy into the blue room. Which yeah. I had decorated really nicely, you know. So they were squirreling on the on the board and you know and then they came up to my office and say we have to show you something this is exciting okay <laughs> so i said present yourself right so we presented were, five five shows yes five shows they presented five shows one of them was world war one the great war world war one weekly as it's <laughs> called sorry <laughs> <laughs> world war one weekly and, you know, Spidey was babbling along this British pâté and blah, 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 and how exceptional it was. And I said, this is great. You know, okay, okay, let's do this. Uh, the other stuff was, what was the other side? Okay, the five channels. And we, we, did, we did start producing two of them. We yeah. started do, doing three of them. Two came out. Was the Great War came out. Yeah. Into Context came Into out, context. which we revived yes. uh, the, last yeah. year. Uh, there was also uh, 20th Century Women, which was a channel that my then girlfriend was going yeah. to host. Yeah. There was also Decades, which was gonna, which would be like, you pick a theme for the 20 for the entire 20th oh, century, yeah. like a night on the town. Yeah. And my, uh, and each day of the week, you'd have like 1901 to 1910, 1911, 1920, and exactly. so what a night on the town might involve that. Yeah. And then the fifth the fifth one, which we shot a pilot for it, and it's, it's still one of the funniest things I've ever seen, was called Better Toasters. And it had to do with just... <laughs> it just so typically just, indie. It had to do with just, just weird technology. Yeah, um, one day we'll do that again, because we can find the weird stuff Better in a toasters. screen ocean. Yeah. But, but the Great War was the most time sensitive, or World War I weekly. So... As a program director, I said, okay, let's do the Great War. There you go. And then we started uh, looking for a studio. That was in Berlin, actually. Then I made the set, you know. You know me. With the map. Remember the With, original map? Oh, yeah. yeah. Maps. And oh, I actually pinned a carpet on the wall because that looked really cool. Then I bought with my... Uh, at. Dingsbums with Robert, my friend. I bought the chair, the chair, oh, the chair of, wisdom. of wisdom. That was yeah. the, the chair, chair of wisdom. wisdom. And Justinian's desk. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't right. Justinian's desk yet when you bought it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So, and then I got the crew together 
And I said, let's start. But it wasn't just that simple. Remember, we also originally produced it not just in English. There was a German version and yes. a Polish version. Polish was. So, yes. Yeah. We had um, Krachten, Christoph, Christoph Krachten. Krachten. He did the he did the translation hmm. of the first one in German, and then we had Marek. Marek Our own Marek, who, who works oh, with us for Time Goes who, Now. Who works for Time Goes Now? He was the presenter for Polish. And Marek then, is now our head of operations. Yes, there <laughs> and, you go. You hey, know. you want to hear a funny story about the Polish thing? When The Great War came out and the English version got really big, somebody posted under a bunch of videos. He's like, you know this channel's just a big rip-off of this Polish channel. They're not even giving any credit <laughs> for it. And they posted pictures of Mark. I'm like, he's even wearing the same clothes. Because we wore the same clothes, the vest and stuff. Yeah. And had the same map, but the same oh, map in Polish. They didn't even stop to think that maybe we had something to do with... No, I was ripping Marek off. I was totally ripping <laughs> yes. Marek off. Sorry, exciting. Mark. <laughs> it, it was. I mean, it was. It was really, really exciting yeah. times. But it yeah. required us to do a lot of thinking. So, what Astrid needed to come up with was how do you actually produce content like this without breaking your back and putting out so much content? And you put out. You put together a whole workflow of how it was going to work with and hired the the director later director you directed you directed like what the, the beginning half, she directed herself half year, yeah. you directed I the directed. episodes so yeah. you were producing and directing and then it, well, then after after a while it was David Voss who was directing yeah I, I think it was I did it for a year and, and then, then David and here's then, a picture of David yes David I met and David Zeppelsauer as well and Zeppelsauer Daniel Zeppelsauer yes I remember Daniel Zeppelsauer I met him in the cafe right in front of the studio he's cool he's a cool yes, guy very nice guy <laughs> and I met David Voss whom I loved from the very beginning in Hamburg and, I, and he said yeah I'm interested in, in, in history and da, 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 da. and you know in my usual brain thing you know I looked at him I said would you like to go to Berlin and he said what for and I said <laughs> now, I want, actually wanted him to do, no offense, Sebastian, but I wanted David, you know, to have a little closure to do the interview today. But he's on parental leave because he's just had a kid. So congratulations, David. Congratulations, David. And, and we also had to come up with how we were going to write it. And that's yes. where we were spending the first, like, four, five, six weeks. We the, were first, just... the first five episodes was absolute, absolute f***ing murder. Did you have uh, uh, any disagreements about uh, how the episode should be written? No, it's, we, it wasn't until we hammered out the template, which we hammered out in August. I always say August 1914, but it was August 2014. Um, the first few episodes, they're really good, but they're a little more scattered. We hadn't hammered out our template with the different segues and blocks and yes. re it's... You, I'm a little bit of a, I'm a little bit of a s s structure Nazi, and uh, Indy was writing it as he does, very like very good. It was very it was driven and everything. Fantastic. But I was looking at it and I was saying, Indy, I think you're gonna run out of steam. Yeah, no, it's, you go it, it took so it. much longer. <laughs> and your structure Nazi, that, that was like Albert Speer. <laughs> <laughs> It was a little bit. So so what we did, we talked a lot about this, and what we actually did is that we looked at Philip DeFranco. Yeah. That was yeah, our that yeah. was that was the, the actual template for how we were gonna do it. Yeah. Uh, I mean obviously Philip DeFranco does great still does great content, is doing great content back then, but it's very different since it's it's newsy and it's like stuff that and it's very different topics. But this is what that was our biggest challenge, and it is to this day, to a degree, our biggest challenge. One video will have very many topics in it. Yeah. Not like a traditional documentary yeah. where you have one topic and it goes from start to end, but it will go different fronts, different topics. Because it's chronology based. And, yeah, yeah, and it has to be done in, in fairly short time. We don't have an hour to like kind of let it all flow out. It's gotta go boom, boom, boom. So we used the same method that Philip uses to transition from one topic to the other. And that's where we cracked the nut. And then we just took standard English class, uh, you know, beginning, recaps and conclusions. Recaps and stuff. And no, but the segues, that, but, yeah. the segues, I spend some episodes, I'll spend as much time on a segue from one block to another as I will on the content of the actual blocks, which is because that's, that's to, to get the flow is really important. Now, here's the thing we say it was an exciting time, and it was an exciting time. Now, the Great War, it, it got big pretty quickly. Like, it took about 10 months before we had like 80 or 90,000 subscribers. And that was great, and I liked it when I got to 100, 250, 500. That was really cool. But I never, ever, ever had as much excitement for any YouTube thing I've ever released as the day we got 5,000 subscribers. I was like, <laughs> I was, oh my God. It only been like, it'd been like a month and a half, and we'd been on the front page of Reddit oh, and so stuff, proud. and it was taking off, and I was like, 
<laughs> drivers. And so yeah, but that was we, that we, was the best. That was the best feeling. Better than a hundred thousand. We but, were a little uh, bit jaded, of course, because well, we'd been doing the German YouTube stuff for quite some time and had lots of big channels. But our biggest channel was actually our shareholders. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So here we were. Uh, and it's an suddenly, expensive channel. <laughs> it was for, for a YouTube channel. It was an expensive channel. And we were investing money in it. So what happened was that Astrid was under constant attack from all over the place, from our colleagues, from our, our head of finance was like, why are you spending this money on that? And I was under constant attack in our board meetings where I had to defend it. And the idea among our supervisory board was, this is the hobby pro project that Astrid and Sparty have started that doesn't go anywhere. But the fact is, it was going somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. one of the reasons was actually two reasons for that. One. I had a fight with YouTube already from the very beginning about demonetization because they demonetized the whole channel. And I, yeah. I, I, I escalated that all the way up to the YouTube directors and we managed to fix that bit, but we still weren't able to really get it to finance itself until we had the idea. And that's actually when we hired Flo. <laughs> Yes. Oh, for social media. Yeah. Yeah. Social yeah our social media manager, uh, Florian Wittig. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we decided that we needed to try something new. And this was brand new at the time. And that was creating a micro crowdfunded community, yeah. really a community that drives behind it. And you guys are still out there today. And we're extremely, extremely happy to have been able to meet all of you guys, get to know you and do this together because that's really what it is. And that's yeah. when we turned into what it really was, the first interactive real-time history series. Holistic, global, free, interactive, real-time history. That's, yeah. that's, that was the first, the first in the world as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Because think of any other documentary, even if it was done you know, in a real-time format and stuff, when you see it, if you see a, a Ken Burns thing, it might be great, but it's finished. You can't go, hey, you know, my great uncle, has he fought in this battle, and he actually says his recollection is slightly different from that. But since we're doing this on YouTube, people write us these things in comments, they send us emails, we can fact check and corroborate, and it actually makes the story better. We incorporate these things into the story. Like when we started doing specials, uh, I was writing, you know, I wrote all the regular episodes for The Great War, but I couldn't have written all the specials as well. It was just would have been too much. And I don't have the expertise in a lot of the topics. But we'd get mails for like, some guy would write in, Hi, I've been a communications officer in the Canadian Army for the last 20 years. I'd like to do the research for a special about communications during The Great War. And we're like... Yeah, so that was, uh, that was, <laughs> and, and Flo is social media director. He was in charge, part of it was in charge of keeping an eye on all of these people around the world and getting all the research together for all the specials, which paid off because there were some great specials. And this is what eventually became the Time Goes to Army. This is what we, what, and this is like really closest to our heart because what we'd set out to do from a very early day, already before we started doing uh, real-time documentaries, our first project was about the Olympics, uh, first oh, yeah. historical project, about the Olympics and the creation of the Olympics, which is really Astrid's big passion project. Uh, still sort of there, I think, right? Very much. Yeah. Uh, and um, the idea of actually bringing people closer together through sports, but also bringing people closer together through media and having this global kind of community that takes an interest in our past in order to learn from it. That was always there. That was there way before we started doing the Great War. And at least I can, I can always speak for myself, but I think I've heard the same from you, at many, both yeah. of you at many times. Mm -hmm. It was when we cracked that nut, when we started seeing, wow, we really have a community here. We have a, an interactive community that has the same interest. It doesn't have an interest in specifically right wing or left wing or centrist policy, but just the interest, interest. of learning together and drawing conclusions from that moving forward. And that, that really is what ignited our passion, I would say. Mm -hmm. right. Hey, uh, a side note here. Um, we spent so much time working on the Coubertin and the 1896 Olympic project, which we'll have to get back to one day, that um, the weird things stick in your head. Do you know who Zyklos, Damascus, and Theodoros were? <laughs> Those were the three Greek pole vaulting entries in the 1896 Olympics. That's the kind of thing that I will never, ever forget. I mean, when I, when I have Alzheimer's... Greek well, prime ministers. Oh, oh, wait, oh, God. Deliana Stragumis Trikoupis. That was three of them. The Greek prime ministers of the 1880s and 1890s. Dragumis Trikoupis Delianas. There you go. We still have it in us. Okay. 
Papa Diamantopoulos. Oh, Papa Diamantopoulos was awesome. Yes. Uh, far, he was, uh, he was, uh, well, they'll you, you, we'll, do the show one we'll day. We'll do the show. We He's got a question for you. Uh, so now that we've talked a little bit about the very beginning, yeah. maybe give uh, the audience and me a bit of background of how it progressed, 1915, 2015, and so on and so forth. When did you guys leave Mediacraft? Uh, 2016. 2016, you left Mediacraft. Yeah. So then... And by then, Flo and Tony were producing The Great War. They started doing that late 2015, yeah, I think. You November in November that. 2015. Yes. So I stayed. Obviously, I was going to continue doing The Great War until the end. And that was my plan. And I kept that plan. You know, I the last regular episode that I hosted was November 11th, 1918, 2018. However, already after they left Mediacraft, we started talking about doing something ourselves. Because one thing about The Great War... Uh, I was under contract and I got a salary, which was fine with me. I didn't have any royalties or rights to the to my scripts, which I didn't mind. I knew that I didn't know it was going to become big. It was well, it was documentaries, great. Documentaries, you don't become rich from but, them anyway. But yeah. But we we were thinking in future we'd like to do other documentary series and we'd like to have the rights ourselves so we can do what we want with them. So that's when in 2017 we formed Time Ghost, right? Yeah. And the first thing we did was the Cuban Missile Crisis day by day. Uh, then we did the World Dictionary. And then we, at that December, we decided that we were going to start doing World War II in and real between time. Between two wars came before that. Well, between two wars started, but we had already decided we were going to do World true, War II. True, yeah. So, uh, Astrid, did those two just decide to do World War no, II, we, or did we, you have to kick them in the butt a little? Oh, God. I did not want to do World War II. You didn't want it. I absolutely I didn't, didn't either. Everybody had been asking and asking, when are you going to do World War II? When are you going to do World War II? I just wasn't interested in World War II. Uh, and I started, I started studying uh, the Holocaust when I was 10 years old. And I, I, I am still very passionate about it. But I was like, I don't think we can tell this story. It's going to be very horrible. And I also thought, what can I say? It's funny what people say about when I talk about what I do. What can I say about World War II that hasn't been covered a million? times before and the second you start doing it week by week by week you have a lot to say but that has never been so uh, Astrid yeah what did you have to do to get them I uh, had to force them yes into she had she it was Astrid said, on, World War II it. would not exist without that I I, I I can actually quote you you've probably forgotten what you say or what you said probably. yourself but I, what did I, I know say? what you said what did I say? <laughs> boys get over yourselves just do it yeah. your the audience wants it I want it and you guys really, really just have to get over yourselves. <laughs> and, and she was right, and that was uh, that's why we did a, we did a Kickstarter thing to get going. Yeah. And as soon as we announced that we were going to do World War II, we made the goal like within a couple of days. You know? Yeah. Yes, and, because um, we, and because we didn't have any money, we had to do it in our garden hut. We're sitting there right now, still. Yeah. <laughs> but it was only half the size of this. Yeah, you know, we knocked out a wall. Yeah, it's been rebuilt. <laughs> That wasn't in there. That early ever, it was just the three of us doing everything the social media and everything. the production and the directing and, and the she lighting was and everything. It. So, but, um, yeah, we couldn't Which, afford Irina, it. I'm so glad that I don't have to do that anymore, not because I hate it, <laughs> but because I'm so bad at editing compared to you. That, that thing and is, all the other he's guys. not a bad editor, but when, when Arena, what, what were you like, 20 or something when you started working for us? And I remember saying, like, looking at the first day, I'm like, Party, she's already way better than you. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, I mean, talking about getting great personnel like that. I mean, we yeah. started off, we had the Dutch guys, we had Joram and Vike yeah. at the beginning, and yeah. we've had Arena, and we've had, we had, well, we had the whole gang, Frankie and James and everybody. So that was, yeah, Cuban Crisis, the Dictionary, Between Two Wars, and then World War II. And then when, we, when World War II got going, then that's when we it made enough money to be able to actually have other people other than the three of us making all the videos yeah. um, and we've done loads of stuff on Time Ghost now uh, and some of you may know that I have already started covering the Korean War in real time uh, today is like July 10th or something that we're filming this uh, 12th 12th Okay, well, that began on June 25th, 1950. So we're in 1950 now. Mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm writing two wars at the same time. <laughs> which, like you did, like you did. Which I did the last one. three yes. three months of the Great War. I wrote the, the most, the biggest three months of the Great War <laughs> and the first three months of World War II at the same yes, time. I that was a really tough, tough that period. Tough. So I thought it was going to be easier because I thought, ah, Korea is a smaller war. The scripts are going to be smaller and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the scripts for the first few Korean War episodes are as long as the scripts in like January, February, March of 1945 and World yeah. War II. So there, it is that much stuff. It's really cool. You should check it out. Now that World War II is finished, almost, 
uh, what do you guys say looking back on six years of your life, basically? Ten years now. Ten Remember, years, yeah. You know, when in Berlin, the day we filmed the last few regular episodes of The Great War... I uh, remember when we filmed, them, and I, I this was in October uh, 2018 because we filmed in advance. I remember after we filmed them, I was just walking around Berlin. I felt just so hollow. I, I, just, I sat down in this bar, had he a couple cried. of drinks, he cried. cried. I was like, wow, well, I just, uh, I have he, no uh, idea no, how I'm going to finish it like this. Again. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. you don't, the amount of time and energy you put into doing this, it's not, it is, I say it's my job. And, and it is my job. This is how I make most of my living, you know. But it's beyond that. I mean, you have to... You think about it all the time, even when you're not working out all yeah. the time. Yeah. You know, it's... And this is a... This is... The Great War is a great project, but this is a much bigger project. And this is even more in-depth, you know. And uh, so I have no idea how I'm going to feel when we shoot the last episodes. We shot... Today, the last weekly one we shot was August 10th, 1945. So, spoiler, there's not a whole lot, lot, lot of them left for me to write and for me to shoot. So, we shall see. I, yeah. what, what I feel is, I really feel incredibly proud and happy about what we've managed to do because yeah. we've fulfilled one small thing of, of, or it's a huge thing, but, you know, we can go much further. We fulfilled our mission that we set ourselves to start sharing knowledge with the world and actually doing a bit way with now hundreds of millions of views on our videos with several million people watching every month the amazing time ghost army with over 10,000 yeah, members love the time who ghost it, army. this is really we get to meet them we get to see them at some of our things in real life it's really yeah. it's that's yeah. cool and, yeah. and it's it's it it really is a privilege to be, be allowed to be part of that and i think for me and astrid it's a little bit of a different thing We've been media, I mean, Astrid has been creative all her life, without a doubt, and she's been a creator, but she's also been a media executive a lot, and I've been a media executive. And I'm just an actor, musician, historian, yeah, which and, is a weird combination. And it's nice to actually transition into something where we can make a little bit of a, di little bit of a difference in the world. I'm not saying we're I changing we the have, world, but just People a use our bit. stuff in schools. I'm yeah. just, the, my, the last day I was in Stockholm before coming out here, again, some kid that was like 22 and stuff was saying that he'd been watching us for years and years. He was, uh, he was Korean, actually, and he was with his parents, and they were visiting uh, Stockholm, and I don't think his parents spoke English, because I don't think they understood why he wanted to take a photo of this strange middle-aged guy in a baseball <laughs> cap, with him, like, with my arm around him. So, but, um, yeah, I like, I love that they use it in, in schools, that it's, yes. it's, it's, it should be. And I mean, we will go on doing this. Yeah. I'm just well, saying. We're really good I at mean, it. I think it's really important <laughs> as well to, to really... Uh, not only raise our hat to the Time Goes Army, who we have to thank. That We've we're already done to that, do that. We've done that many times, but it's also the team that's grown. And he was saying it just now. We started off just the three of us well, yeah. back there, actually, and it was about half the size of where it is right now. And now we have a studio in Austria where we're actually doing Korea. Doing yeah. Korea. Uh, but the team has really grown, so we're almost 25 people now doing yes. this. Yes, and, and I have to say that the most important person beside Indy and you. And you, okay. And yes. Is Irina, who is behind the camera. Yeah. Irina, if Irina wouldn't be so talented, Irina, come here. <laughs> yes, she has been editing the whole Thanks. Second World War. And she's so good and she puts so much love you know, somebody's going to offer her so much more money than we can give her. Okay, okay, editor, take <laughs> this out. <laughs> yeah, but there's also James, who does fantastic oh, work in, in writing in and writing researching. For the, for so the, talented. Yes. Sebastian, who you see right here, who is a, a fairly so new... Talented. Yeah, a fairly new... <laughs> Stop it. But he, he's, writing, uh, he's writing our exciting... Well, okay, when the World War II series ends, and I should say this, when the World War II series ends, we're not going to just sort of make a bunch of specials or something to sort of milk the channel, but we don't want the channel to die. So we're going to continue doing chronological real-time stuff on that channel. And I won't tell you what... Have we already mentioned we what We have it? mentioned Okay, it, yeah. well, <laughs> starting starting covering each week, each episode covers a month, starting in January 1930, we're doing the rise of Hitler, but we're doing it and from the... And the collapse of Weimar. And the collapse of Weimar, but from the perspectives of all of the various 
political parties in Germany at the time because they all have their own skewed newspapers and stuff. And he is German, so he can read all those newspapers. So he's the lead writer on the rise of Hitler, which is going to be super exciting. It's going to be super cool, guys. <laughs> yeah, and there's also and it's going to be a smashing set. It is, it is, as always. Which Blood is one, in the streets. One of our yes. hallmarks, actually, are your sets, us. Yeah, they're great. That's like the, the, that's so important for the whole show. Thank but there's also, there are, are more editors. There's uh, there's Miki, there's Caro, there's Simon. Simon. And Mikolai doing our thumbnails. Mikolai doing our thumbnails yes. and doing our graphic, which are really, really important. Jake, who, who holds together the... He's our social the, media the, guy. The, yes. social Tom, media. our new writer, Tom. T T Tom just joined the team, Tom Aldis. Marek, who does of our operations uh, and takes care of that. We've got Tarek. Tarek, who oh, writes yeah. a lot of our shorts and does the day-by-day -day content. Yeah, the, our Instagram day-by-day. Uh, and day. Andreas and, in New York. Yes. Your brother, yes, who we right. got on board during uh, D-Day. He does, the, he does the, the, all of that. D-Day would not have come out on time without no. his brother. And it no, kind of had to come out on time. So. <laughs> no, With his air-cooled server. No, water-cooled yeah. server in yeah. New York. His brother's a nerd. But uh, he's a great nerd, and he's our nerd. But... Wait, yeah, and of okay. course, we, what we should—I mean, what we should not forget under any circumstances—that's also Anna, our daughter, who comes in and does uh, spice and ties at the moment, and has done home front and all of that. Uh, she is, however, busy with other things, so she's not full time with us. She helps out with the hosting, and she helps out in the parts that she's passionate about, that she likes and, and takes care of, especially. Yes. Uh, is, is there a photo of your brother when he was Arthur Dent going to school and stuff? No, there is. Not, we can't get right not. No. That's, I just want to get back to how cool his brother Andreas is. Andreas yeah. is an awesome guy. Yeah. Um, he gets into things. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he was so into Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when he was when he was a teenager. He went to school, you know, in the bathroom like Arthur as Arthur Dent in the bathroom in pajamas <laughs> with a towel. With a towel in case head. you get picked up, you know, which <laughs> makes sense. Uh, so beyond the editing team, we have a whole cartography. We started working with Eastery, and that then evolved. We had to because Eastery had other projects he needed to deal with, so he handed that over. And now we, for a while, it was Sietze and Daniel who were doing it. Then Andreas came on board and helped out to actually create a geographic information system, which we're still building on. That expanded. Now we have Steve and TJ and Tom is working on as well. I don't have in my head exactly. If I forget somebody, for sorry. Him. But Daniel is really the, 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 the guy who's like, he's the glue that... Now the glue who holds it together is my brother. Yeah, at the Daniel moment. Daniel is the muscle that really pushes it all through. Oh, we so can't we, forget to mention Ian because we had Ian for a yeah, while. Yeah, Ian and Ian, we love you and we miss you. Uh, he drove yeah. us crazy. I mean, just, <laughs> Ian is brilliant and he's so talented and he gets things done. You can't, you can't, but every now and then. You can just kill him. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, boy. So, I know, it's been, I mean, I, uh, the people that we had working for us, we have and have had, had yeah, are, have all been uh, amazing. We, um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to the next 10 years of all these projects with Korea, however long that is. We've got the, the Hitler thing. We've got a couple of Cold War related things starting next year. In the pipeline. So okay. I'd like to finish the dictionary at some point. Yeah. Um, and we got democracy and revolutions that we're yeah. still... Yeah, we're still working that out, guys, but yeah. it will be coming. So, but, uh, so I want to ask you a question, Sebastian. Cool. You're like the newest addition to the creative team. And, and Tom. Uh, Tom is technically. Oh, that's, okay, fine. I'm no that's longer right. the guy that has to, you know, do everything. I'm yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> You've graduated. <laughs> yeah, but so how is it to work for Time Ghost? Oh, boy. Um, I mean, like the three hosts, for me, it's just amazing to work, or like everybody, I guess, in the whole thing. It's amazing to work in something that I really enjoy doing and something that interests me greatly like i thought a year ago i'd work at some bullshit uh, we can curse on video right yeah, yeah. some bullshit tax firm or consulting whatever and now i get to do history and like read sources and write engaging stories and also read comments and know that people watch what i contributed and learn it's it's great it's really 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 amazing so thank you and then also the the climate here guys it's um Beautiful chaos. So we're controlled all controlled chaos. Co controlled <laughs> chaos. Uh, so uh, I mean, we are we are a lot of creatives, and there's a lot of thinking and spitballing ideas and coming up with new things and then throwing them in the in the bin again and starting anew and trying this and trying that, and sometimes getting all these horses on the road, so to speak, is a bit challenging, but. 
It's been a hell of a ride. I've been here almost a year now, which is also crazy because time flies when you love what you're doing. But yeah, it's great. It's beautiful. Structured chaos. Yeah. Structured chaos. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. One more shout out I want to do is to Marcus Pagan, formerly Marcus Linky, but he got married. Oh yeah, right. Marcus, Marcus Pagan. Yeah. Uh, Marcus Marcus actually worked on the Great War for a little while. The last couple of years, doing sound and doing some editing. And with us, he's done some freelance writing. And when we do, when I do the episodes together with Sabaton for their Sabaton History Channel, Marcus does a lot of the writing for that. So, and he's going to be doing some stuff with me for Korea later on this year. So, uh, Sabaton is more or less practically part of our extended team as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and to Sabaton, uh, who are all really nice guys. So, so, which, so, which I'm glad it turned out they were all really nice guys. <laughs> you know. Okay, so we're going to sign off. But we'll see you guys next week and every week. And ten years from now, or maybe five years from now, we'll do another one of these specials. But until then, Excelsior! Excelsior!